Okay, I'll admit it. The only reason I started watching Farming Life in Another World is because of the hot girl at the bottom of the show's poster. And even though they are begging me to make a tomato joke here, I'm gonna take the high road. At least she's not holding a basket of watermelons. But to my surprise, Farming Life turned out to be much more of a slice of life show than an etchy harem comedy, which is way different from the manga. And for the record, I switched over pretty quickly from Tia to Team High Elf, which kind of surprised me. Now, a quick warning, no one's gonna watch this show for the plot twists or secret identity reveals, but there are some minor spoilers in this review, especially for the first two episodes. Let's check it out. Farming Life in Another World is about a man named Hiraku, whose life is so bad that he's offered a chance to live a much better life in a fantasy setting as a way of apology. In his original life, Hiraku was sickly and bedridden for many years, dying at the young age of 39. So in his new life, he's given an extraordinarily healthy body and a magical farming tool that can transform into pretty much whatever he needs it to. He's dropped off in the middle of the woods in a fantasy setting as a fully formed adult with a new body and gets to work creating shelter, taming or hunting the local wildlife, and farming food. When a vampire named Lou Lulacy shows up, he proposes almost instantly and she accepts. This starts off a long series of new arrivals to the village, almost all of whom are gorgeous women of various races, and they all work together to build their new community out in the woods. One of the selling points of the show is that it's weird, and I don't mean that in a look at these crazy characters or look at this wacky setup kind of way. Farming life isn't trying to be weird, but there are some strange things about it that made me keep thinking, I wonder why they're doing it this way. And that kept my attention throughout the series where a more conventional isekai probably would have lost my interest. The first thing that's strange is the first episode. It's not unusual for the main character to meet the god of that world, or for the show to do an exposition dump at the beginning to explain the world and its setup, but the final two thirds of this episode is just the main character talking. At some point towards the end, I thought to myself, I've been hearing the same voice actor for a really long time now. And for a show whose main draw I thought was hot anime girls, well, there weren't any. I thought they did something smart at the start of the show by giving you an opening montage where the village was fully armed and operational with all the different female characters. It was almost like they were saying, there will be hot anime girls, we promise, but first, let's watch a guy farm. The next strange thing about the show happens when all of those hot anime girls finally show up. Farming Life in Another World is a harem show that almost completely ignores sex. We do eventually get evidence that sex has occurred at least once, off screen, and there are several bits of subtle or not so subtle innuendos from time to time, usually from the elf girls who want to repopulate their species, but the show never comes across as crass or bursting with hormones. Usually the references to sex come after the villagers finish building something, and the elf girls are like, you know what we could do now, but then the main character will make some non-committal remark and kind of slide out of the situation. Because the main character tends to keep such a tight lid on the details of his romantic relationships, it leads to the last strange thing about the show. I kept asking myself, just how many wives does Hiraku have? Hiraku and Lu try to set the world's speed record for getting married in the second episode, but after that, Hiraku appears to be genuinely devoted to his wife. I thought that maybe he was married to Tia and perhaps one or two other characters, but we never get confirmation of that. We do get confirmation in the show that it would not be unusual for a man to have multiple wives, because the Dragon Dad talks about marrying off his daughter to Hiraku, who's already married at that point. But the guy genuinely seems like a devoted, monogamous husband in the anime, which is very different from the manga, which apparently goes full on fantasy route. I mean, male fantasy, not, you know, stab stab fantasy. In the manga, Hiraku has at least 13 different wives. Lu, Tia, Rhea, Rize, Rafa, Hakuren, Anne, Frauren, Krome, Sena, Lastamon, Gran Maria, Kurul, and Korone. And he sleeps with a different elf each night on a rotating basis, you know, to preserve their species. The director of the anime adaptation instead has the main character fend off every advance from any woman other than his wife, Lou. In fact, I was kind of surprised when the Lamias showed up and he told them that they'd have to wear clothes in the village because he wouldn't be able to stop staring at them otherwise. The village was already being flooded with gorgeous women day after day, but this is about the only time he comments on their looks. He seems to have no problem ignoring any and all advances. The bathhouse is about the only other time where he gives any hint that he's noticed how good looking the women are. In other words, he treats the women in his village with kindness and respect, but talk about a crazy premise for an anime. What's next? Someone gets reborn as a vending machine in a fantasy world and has to be carried around by a gorgeous girl with incredible strength? Yeah, actually that one's coming in July. There are a few reasons why this show isn't going to be a good match for some people. Firstly, as already stated, it's a harem show. It's a relatively wholesome harem show, but it's still a show that features one male protagonist and dozens of well-endowed women who are a bit light in the character development department. To be fair, so is everyone else. I could go on about how these women would also rather compete for one man's attention instead of just demanding that more men be recruited to the village and so forth, but you get the point. The show's a male fantasy, and if that doesn't sit well with you, then don't watch it. 
The other main reason to skip farming life is that it's basically a town builder simulation. Lots of isekai shows try to recreate what it feels like to play a generic fantasy themed RPG, and this one's a change of pace in that it's about building the village instead, but it can feel as though you're watching someone play a farming sim game where you expand your crop fields and invite villagers to come live in your town. If you're waiting for more world building or exploration of the show's lore or magic system or a plot, then you're gonna be frustrated by this anime. So why is the show worth your time? Well, you get to look at good-looking women while having a satisfying village progression at the same time. You know those time-elapsed photos where you watch a flower grow from seed to bloom? Or where you watch the construction of a house in super sped up time? It's kind of like that. Each group of villagers brings their own set of skills that powers up the town's civilization level, and it's kind of fun to see people arrive with different motives, but then be won over by the idea of just living out in a peaceful village and enjoying a simple but satisfying existence where everyone has meaningful work, no one goes hungry, and everyone seems to get along, even if some of those people might fight or eat each other if they met in different circumstances. There's something satisfying about watching the town's population and technology level grow bit by bit. Kind of like if Robinson Crusoe were put on by a troupe of bikini models, which could turn out to be the best thing or the worst thing ever made, but we've already got the anime equivalent, so just watch that. I was on the fence about making this video or not, but then I saw one of my favorite anti-tubers say that this was his favorite show of the season. Now, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't even say it's a particularly good show, but I was surprised that Farming Life wasn't a bad show. I went in thinking that this would be a guilty pleasure, where I'd have to put up with some nothing burger of a plot in order to ogle Tia for 25 minutes per episode. And for some people, that still might be the case. I'm not going to pretend that the plot is revolutionary, and some people will find it boring. But there's enough progress in the village build and in the new additions to the cast to make this a very easy show to keep watching, which is more than I can say for about half the shows from the winter lineup. I give Farming Life in Another World 6 out of 10 high elf girls, which means that if it's not your cup of tea, feel free to skip this one. But if it does sound like a show that you'd like, I do recommend it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. He's dropped off in the middle of the woods in a fantasy setting as a fully formed adult with a new body and gets to work creating shelter, taming food, or hunting the local wildlife and farming food. Did I say taming food? Huh. You gotta tame that food.